When we think of cutting a European rail, we usually imagine Germany, Switzerland, Austria, maybe France. But few people know that another, much smaller and poorer country not only surpassed them in innovation, but came close to changing the face of European passenger rail. The engineers and transit planners of this little country took already existing concepts and improvements and mashed them together into trains and operational plans that were groundbreaking for their time and are easily on par with modern systems today. This is the story of the Hungarian railways and the rail revolution that never was. It's the mid-1980s in Europe. The last golden age of European rail is about to end, with the dark ages of the 90s fast approaching. Stagnation, managed decline, line closures, budget cuts under the alibi of efficiency, pouring money into highways instead of tracks. End of century neoliberalism at its finest. Before we go further though, I'll have to quickly explain trains, so we're on the same page. See, back in those days, trains were mostly thought of as a locomotive dragging cars behind it. This is called a classic set. Even the much envied Austrian or Swiss railways relied on such classic sets. Sometimes the end car would have a driver's cabin that's called a control car from which the locomotive in the back could be remote controlled. We call such a train a push pole and we like it because it allows us to change direction without needing to switch the locomotive, saving lots of time, money and fuel. Germans were particularly big on this concept. The step above the push poles is the multiple unit. Here there is no locomotive, the motors are built in and there is a driver's cabin on both ends by default. This allows for much better operational flexibility, acceleration and braking, meaning better punctuality and shorter travel times among others. So 1980s. Suburban rail traffic in Hungary is done by locomotives hauling old cars with manual doors with old BTT control cars hooked on the ends. Everything is done by hand, speeds are low and operation is rather unsafe. You could just open these doors mid-journey and jump out if you wanted. It was at this time that someone at the Hungarian Railways headquarters found themselves sober on a Monday morning. So sober that they created a brand new operating concept for suburban rail. The Guns Works, the Hungarian domestic rolling stock manufacturer at the time, thus received a monumental task. Designing and building a brand new train that would propel suburban rail not just to the present, but to the future, via the railway's brand new experimental operational concept. And in 1988, they were ready to present their creation. The BDV Motor 414 series was a massive jump in quality and technology compared to anything else Hungarian Rail had and surpassed, or at least was on par with, anything any other European rail company was fielding at the time in the suburban category. It beat the Austrians in quality and modernity, who were just putting into operation their next-gen suburban push pulls at that point. It beat the Austrians! The trains had automatic doors, accelerated like mad, and were even equipped with automatic couplers, which was state-of-the-art tech at the time. You could hook two four-car units together even, and operate both their engines synchronously from one driver's cabin. You could also extend individual trains with up to four filler cars instead of two, making a six-car unit. Nowadays, there is even Wi-Fi on them. But oh no, what's this? Viktor Orban is listening in on you. He actually does, it's a well-documented thing. Be gone, Orban, for thanks to NordVPN, you can now keep malicious actors out of your private life. Available both on Android, iOS and PC, NordVPN is the number one VPN provider on the market. Their virtual private network service keeps you anonymous on the internet by hiding your physical location and encrypting your your personal data. One of their main features is of course the elimination of region blocks. Want to check out that new show on that streaming platform? Hoops, unavailable in your country. Except, no it's not. NordVPN is a useful tool if you travel a lot, like I do on trains, and connect often to public Wi-Fi networks. For example, if access is limited by time or amount of data, now you can pretend to be someone else digitally and use those limits all over again. NordVPN also has a special feature called Threat Protection Pro included in the subscription plan. Threat Protection Pro blocks fake websites, scans the links you click and the things you download, and even blocks ads and web trackers for you. Threat Protection Pro doesn't need an active VPN connection and can be turned on and off independently so you can sit back and enjoy an internet free of annoyances anytime. Get NordVPN's two-year plan plus four months free using my link nordvpn.com slash adamsomething which you will also find in the description. Subscribing is risk-free since you also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. 
So is the BDV mod a multiple unit or a push-pull? Both actually. It's a hybrid with regular UIC cars between a motorized car and a control car. This was a great compromise. The flexibility and interoperability of push-pulls with the improved dynamics of multiple units. The cars had double swinging doors in the middle designed for the high passenger flows of suburban traffic. The BDV mods cars were also interoperable with everything the Hungarian railways had at the time. The filler cars could be run as part of regular trains should the need arise, giving you unprecedented flexibility across the network. A total of 24 car units were delivered to the Hungarian railways for starters. Their operation on the budapest Vats line turned out to be such a success that they almost instituted clock-face scheduling on the line. That's when trains depart at the same time every hour, leading to an easy-to-remember, passenger-friendly schedule. Though it didn't work out due to internal resistance. We had to wait until 2004, when it was instituted nationally. Now, the Gunsworks had already built similar trains a few years back, like the Croatian 6111 series. But those were toy trains compared to the BDV mod, designed for smaller lines with low traffic. The trains themselves were really not interoperable with anything else, as far as I know. In in comparison, the BDV mod was real heavy-duty stuff, built to easily handle the busiest suburban lines around the capital. By 1990, all 20 trains had been delivered. It was a time of economic collapse, however, as the fall of the Soviet Union affected Eastern Europe severely. The guns works were no exception. But despite that, they were far from done. In that climate of economic decline and dried-up funding, they decided one quantum leap wasn't enough. So they did it again, with their next creation, the 434 series or BV mod, the intercity version of the BDV mod. These trains are great. They're the same push-pull multiple unit hybrids, but with important upgrades. Among them, their top speed having been increased to 160 km per hour with its four traction motors, which sound like the Millennium Falcon jumping to line speed during acceleration. They have single automatic doors at the ends of each car and their interior is air-conditioned. Speaking of interior, the trains contained innovations like the semi-coupé layout in first class, where the four-seaters are inside their own compartments next to the row of single seats. You only saw this kind of stuff in places like Germany and even there it was quite rare. These trains could even be run in so-called TGV mode by hooking up a second motor car on the other side instead of a control car, operating both synchronously from one end. With one motor car, you could extend the set with two more cars which made a six-car intercity train. Just one car less than the railjet. Now in select videos, I tend to rave about the Austrian railjets, because they represent the current cutting edge of up to higher speed long distance rail. Railjets are push-pull sets, meaning no locomotive switching, and the cars are permanently coupled, uniformly so. If you know the car order of one railjet, you know all of them. Because of this, their interior is also more spacious and quiet. With the railjet's flexibility and operational characteristics, Austrian rail put together a world-class passenger rail network, providing a consistent, dependable, standardized, high-quality service. The railjet network Network is the absolute fucking pinnacle of current higher speed rail transit and I will fight anyone on that. The Hungarian rail BV mode was very, very close to the railjet. It was 95% there. If Austrian long distance traffic was made up purely of BV mods today, no one would complain. Alright, so Gunsworks made a train as good as Siemens, and what's the big deal? Well, railjets entered service in 2008. The BV mod in 1994, a full 14 years earlier. Of course, the BV mod didn't have stuff like power sockets or LCD screens, but those can always be built in during maintenance. Due to its extreme flexibility, you could also plug in new cars if you wanted. A mixed-use car with spaces for bikes and wheelchairs, a bistro or restaurant car for international connections, a car with a family section. The BV mod's flexible design allows for all sorts of modding and modernizations on a plug-and-play basis. No need to take the train apart to bits. Just put the car in. Boom, now it's good for 20 more years. The BV mods were envisioned as the backbone of Hungarian long-distance rail, providing a reliable, high-quality service to every major city, gradually replacing the aging conventional fleet. The proposed system was a version of today's Austrian railjet or Swiss intercity systems, basically.
basically. This is why the BV mods were truly forward thinking and innovative. They weren't just good rolling stock. They were designed and built for a type of modern, reliable and innovative operational concept in the regular speed category that would not be seen in Europe until a decade later. Since these trains were also made up of UIC standard cars, that meant if there is some sort of issue with the trains, you could immediately fall back on locomotives as your backup. They can also pull the BD mod cars since they are also cross compatible with everything else. This is, ooh, this is great. The train people in my audience right now are going like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. With that, Hungary was ready to join the cutting edge of European regular speed long distance rail, surpassing it even. A world class system with a forward thinking operational concept and excellent rolling stock. Plans were made to have the BV mod produced en masse, but the orders never came. It was still the 1990s. The Soviet Union just fell apart. Investment into rail cratered. A long period of decline ensued, which took the guns works with it. Because of this, only three BV mods were ever built. This did not allow for working out the bugs, so the trains remained unreliable. Maintenance remained very pricey, since you have to custom manufacture spare parts in small quantities, as opposed to mass manufacturing them economically, like Siemens does for railjets. The plans for a nationwide intercity train system using BV mods were shelved. With that, the Hungarian railways went straight back to the 1940s in terms of thinking, opting to operate its long-distance network with conventional trains without even control cars. A decade later, thanks to EU funding, the Hungarian railways could buy new trains for local traffic like Siemens Desiros or Stadler Flirts and Kisses, but as far as long distance is concerned, they went for the do-it-yourself route. Enter the Intercity Plus. <sighs> The Intercity Plus program was an attempt to breathe new life into long-distance rail traffic without actually investing any significant funds into it. The original plan of running newly built cars with an eventual control car were… something at least. It was basically a shitty railjet, but it was something. And the first two prototype cars weren't half bad. They were quite good actually, as far as obsolete rolling stock goes. And that latter part was the problem. The Intercity Plus project was obsolete from the moment of its conception. Every developed country on Earth, even America, is going either for permanently coupled push pulls or multiple units. Those are the future of long distance rail transportation. And into this environment enters the Hungarian railways with a fucking conventional set. Because those control cars they promised were never built. The 200 or so cars they planned on were never built either. Only a grand total of 92 cars until the project was scrapped due to a lack of funding. And the factory that built them was no factory at all. It was one of the repair bases in Solnok, which was already understaffed and overloaded even before they got the order to build brand new cars. The end result? A huge backlog in overhaul where the Hungarian Railway's best cars were left to rot on side tracks for years. Meanwhile, the Intercity Plus cars they built were fucking awful. They come with a comical amount of defects and the build quality is, well, let's just say questionable. After the Hungarian government kept forcing the IC Plus project and then consequently abandoned it, the Hungarian Railways were left in a shape arguably worse than before. No operational concept, no developmental plans, just a pile of shitty new cars, a huge maintenance backlog, all the while desperately trying to keep their decaying rolling stock alive. Upon until a few years ago, it seemed the glory days of Hungarian rails were truly over for good. But then, a miracle happened. Someone within the Hungarian government found themselves sober on a Monday morning and ordered the Hungarian railways to announce a competition for brand new long distance push pull trains, which Siemens won with their new generation railjet. 39 trains with at least 7 cars, with 10 more trains on option. This amount of trains could cover most major international connections and could free up enough cars from those lines to stabilize the domestic rolling stock situation for a good 20 years. It seemed that after all, if not being the cutting edge, Hungarian rail will at least get to keep up with the times. But then the project was scrapped due to a lack of funds because the EU won't give Orban money because they don't like the fact that he's turning Hungary into an autocracy. And so the Hungarian railways are and will remain fucked. Oh well, those new railjets ended up going to the Czech railways instead, who for some reason insisted on calling them comfort jets because every goddamn train of theirs has to have its own separate name. Still, in this story, Czechia is the good example, what Hungary could have been. A country that started out in a similar spot as Hungary after the fall of the Soviet Union, they managed to save their domestic train manufacturing and have been investing heavily into their rail infrastructure. They even created their own version of the BV mod and BDV mod called the Škoda Interpanther and the Škoda Regio Panther, though the first one definitely needs some more bug fixings. Still, the Czech Railways put together a pretty good operating concept, aiming to replace most domestic connections with multiple units and the occasional push pull while running rail jets on international connections just like Austria. So the Czech system and their domestic rolling stock are pretty great. Except when they aren't. Like the Czech Rail Director having a fetish for not expanding track capacity. Yes, we've been reconstructing the busiest mainline for two years and didn't add a third track. It's completely unnecessary. Hey, why is the network so congested? Right, so aside from some issues, in the end, Czechia has become what Hungary was supposed to be 
be in the 1990s and onward. I just wish they stopped trying to name all their train types. We got Panther, Fox, Shark, Mouse, Elephant, Spider, we got Pendolino, Railjet, Interjet, Comfortjet, Regionova. Uh, anyway, where was I going with this? Swiss Rail, Austrian Rail, A. Czech Rail, getting there. Hungarian Rail, yeah, it fucking sucks. As for the Gunsworks trains, the suburban ones are still running and some recently even went through overhaul. The Intercity version, however, is a lost cause at this point and are only deployed as replacements strictly on a we didn't have anything else basis, which is an increasingly common occurrence because they cancelled the fucking procurement for trains that would actually. Thank you.